Auto encoders are a technique that have been around for a while in machine learning and deep, deep neural networks in particular. So we're going to see how to use something called a auto auto encoder, a denoising auto encoder. We're going to see how we can actually remove noise using these. They're sort of a foundational technology for something we'll get into in the next module where I do anomaly detection because autoencoders are one of many, many techniques that you can use to detect anomalies in data. So starting off, you're going to run the part of this module, this notebook that is linked in the description. And here you'll see that I ran it on a Mac with MPS, not using Colab. You can run it in Colab as well. These do take a little bit of time to train. So you'll see train times of, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, five minutes with an accelerator like MPS or, or GPU. But if you run them straight up CPU, they, they could take longer, maybe up to an hour. I'm not, not entirely sure. So I'm going to show you this just from the GitHub viewer. I'm not going to actually launch it in Colab like I often do because it would take it would take some time to wait even with the GPU. So here you will see that I create a function here that I use to plot regression. We're, we'll use that a couple of times. It's just a line chart of, of how y changes as, uh, as x changes. Typical chart. So here I am going to show you a neural network that we're going to create and this neural network is you're going to see the output from it here. We're going to basically do a multi output regression. So here this is just a simple regression where we're feeding it one value at a time. Pretty straightforward neural network. It has one output. And as we feed it the values and go through the training, we can see that it basically learns the sine function. Pretty straightforward. We can then do multi-output. So we might have the same, some number of inputs, but then the outputs, there's going to be more than one. So we could predict, say, the sine and the cosine simultaneously. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Here, I am creating a multi-output regression. You can see I am creating similar sort of data. The x, we're only going to have one x because it's, it's one range of values. But we're going to go and predict the, the sine and the cosine. And those are just, they're, they're basically both the same shape, sinusoidal sort of, sort of graph, but they're just slightly out of, out of sync with each other. And we go through and we, we train it just like before. But notice we have two output neurons. That is a multi-output network. And you can see basically that we're, it's predicting both values kind of out, of out of phase with each other. This column is the sine, this column is the, is the cosine. This ability of neural networks to multi-regress like this is the foundation up upon which the autoencoders are made use of. So an autoencoder looks like this. You're going to have some number of input neurons, usually quite a few actually. You'll have a bias neuron as well, but we don't worry too much about that. That's just the intercept essentially. You're going to have some smaller number of hidden neurons, the bottleneck. And then you're going to have the same number of output neurons that you had input neurons. And what this is effectively doing is learning to compress. So you, we're going to see examples where I put an entire image in here. And it's just a long string of numbers equal to the number of pixels that there are flattened in the image. And then it will be trained to produce exactly the same image. So it's, it's trained to produce, it's trained to give the same output for the input. And that might initially seem completely worthless, but it, it's not. What's happening is you have all these numbers here. You may have like 50,000 of them coming in, like we'll see in a moment. But then you're just going to have maybe 500 hidden neurons or even 10 hidden neurons, depending on how much we want to constrain it. And you end up with an encoder and a decoder. This encoder, learns to compress these images down into the values that go out of these hidden neurons, not the weights, but the actual values that the weights calculate. 
that becomes the compressed form of this input. It's a lossy compression. It's not guaranteed that the, that the output will be exactly the same. And then now the second part is the decoder. You could rip off this entire first part of it, just get the compressed numbers, make those be the outputs from the hidden neurons, run them across those weights that were previously trained, and now it should regenerate the image. And we can see that we can even use this kind of technique to teach it to eliminate noise in the input to a degree. So this is a simple autoencoder. You can see that I am setting up the X. It's going to have a range of, of 10, 10 values. The model input neuron is going to have that shape, that 10, as the input and the output. And then there's going to be three hidden neurons with a rectified linear unit. We are going to then train it based on that X data that that I that I basically put together. It's just it's just a count. I'm just putting count data in there. So it's going to learn to reproduce a count data go, going straight through. So you can see that here we basically have that's close to zero. One, two, close to three, four, five, close to six, seven, eight, nine. Because that was that range that I put in up here. So we put in kind of counting numbers and taught it to reproduce that on, on the output side. That's, of course, a very, very simple case. We're just training it on one sequence of numbers. Like when we get into the images, we're going to train it on many different images just to, just to show that we can. So let's do an autoencoder of just a single image. We are going to make use of this. This is Brookings Hall at Washington University. I pass by that every, every time I come to class. And we load it. We do have to have this here, otherwise it's going to think I'm a bot, even though it's my own site. And we resize the image to 128 by 128, and we down, downsample it. And also use anti-aliasing. Just a technique to give a better, a better downsample. We're going to divide every one of those pixels by 255. That's important because that gets the pixels into the appropriate range, 0 to 1, that the neural network really thrives on. You can also think about moving it uh, from negative 1 to 1, that way you're straddling 0, but for this one we're just using 0 to 1. Now, I tried it both with and without the rectified linear unit. You can try it either way. It doesn't particularly matter. In this case, I suppose it's slightly better with the rectified linear unit, but I would have to experiment with that a bit more. So we print out the shape, and we are having 10 hidden neurons that it's going to be compressed across. So I'm not giving a very many hidden neurons to completely compress that image, and you'll see in a moment that has a, a result. So we train the neural network, and then we basically present the image to it and look at the output. And you can see here, let's see, I think I can zoom. I don't make these images too big because then it makes my notebooks giant. But you can see we're, we're definitely getting some distortion here, but you can see it's clearly, clearly Brookings Hall. And again, I'm trying to not give it that good a result, so just that I can show you some of the degradation that occurs. So let's do multiple images. This is where it gets fun. So what we're going to do in this case is standardize the image. I'm taking several buildings located at Washington University. I'm creating a function here that makes them square. So it is going to crop to make them square. You can also pad instead of cropping for squareness. And there's definitely some preference uh, ar around each. But nonetheless, for this one, I am cropping. And then I'm going to take all of those images, display them, and just basically standardize them, convert them to 128 by 128, and display them, and then divide by 255 to normalize between 0 and 1. We save these encodings into an array so that our x is going to have all the proper values so that when we, when we train this thing, so these are the images just in their pure original form. 
So now we're going to train an autoencoder on this multi image data set. What we're going to do is notice I'm putting in quite a few more hidden neurons, 500. That's a pretty good amount to get decent results on these. And it's still going to have the same number of input neurons as output neurons. And that's basically just all the pixels, all those rows lined up and concatenated into one big long sequence. So we're going to loop this number of times and we are going to basically train it. This one's a little trickier to train. I did have to tune this some. So I am using a special learning rate here that I determined largely by trial and error. And then I set it up and I'm, I'm good to go. So I'm going to test it and get the, the rows and columns out. And you'll see that the images, those are the original images. I have made no changes to them. But we're getting them ready for, for training. So we have the X. We can also add noise to an image. And I'm going to use this to demonstrate how we can train a neural network then to remove noise. Here you can see I'm using Brookings Hall again, and I'm opening it up, loading it in, shrinking it to that 128 by 128. And then I call this add noise function, which basically loops over 100 and puts in these squares that are kind of proportionately 20% by 20% sized of the, of, of the image. And you can see a result here. These are all the squares put it in. We have added noise to this image. Now, if you want this to be the denoising autoencoder, what we're going to do is load these same images, make them square, just like before. And we're going to build both an X and a Y, though. The X is going to be the noise image with all those boxes on it. And the Y is going to be the noiseless image. So you're training the neural network to take in a noisy X and produce a noiseless Y. And it works to, to a degree. You can see here we have 30 images total because we created 10 randomized noise images per, per original image. And then we are going to build up the neural network. There's 500 hidden neurons here, just to give it a little more of a shot at it. And we basically train the neural network, adjust the weights, and get it ready to process those images. And then you can see I am going to load the images, run the noisy images through the neural network, and see what that looks like. And you can see some of this here. It's not ideal, but it you can see that it is definitely. Like there you can see the boxes, and then you can see it's really starting to fill in the boxes with appropriate colors. It's filling in up here with a sky color. It's filling in down here with more of that brick tone color. Similarly here and there. So this is a basic just sort of example of how to use these to compress data and also how to denoise images. Thank you for watching this video, and if this was useful, please give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything more from this course. Thank you for watching.